Okay, real quick, uh, just to give you a heads up, we're going to have, I forgot the announcements, but I'll talk about those in a minute. Misty, did you get that other one? Which one do you have? Just the, just the coffee shop one? I'm sorry? Let me just, uh, before we take the offering, I want to kind of explain a little bit. We're going to be doing, uh, we're looking into the idea of online giving. And it's scary to some people and other people embrace it. Uh, but what we're looking at isn't just online giving. It's also uh, an app. Would we enable us to have an app which would allow people to live stream when they're away? You could get on our chapel. It'll be a Chapel Grace app. You can download it on your phone. Who has a phone on them? I actually left mine in my back pocket. Hold your phone up if you have one. Good. Like a lot of you didn't do it. That's great. Wonderful. Anyway, just kidding. Most people, a lot of people give on this. And a lot of people do a lot of things on it. The app will enable us to do a few things. And I'm going to just show just a really quick, I don't know, a few minutes, few seconds, 30 seconds video. Can you show that real quick, Misty? The Alliance presents a custom app experience for your iOS, Android, and HTML for web, all with a unique and customizable design. Powerful administrative tools allow you to publish articles, videos, and audio, or to embed external sources. Keep church members engaged throughout the week with updated sermon videos and audio podcasts. With Tidely, you have an integrated giving solution for the web and text built right into the app. Interact with your users via push notifications, targetable by location, which keep track of device and user habits. Visitors and members can check out the church campus location and staff information, find out what's happening on the event calendar, or fill out the contact form to stay connected. Search the App Store and download your church's app today. Sweet. Hello. Oh, I've been on the whole time. You guys didn't hear me talking, did you? I wasn't talking bad about you at all. So that was actually another church that has done it, and they did their little promo, and I thought that was the best one. It explains what we want to do. It's not just an online giving app. I want to make that clear. This is an app, and this is a way to engage in all aspects. So in other words, if, you want, if we want to connect with you, let's just say like something happens in the middle of the week, and we want to send out a mass text about, hey, we need to pray for this, or this is coming up. We can do a, a text, and it just, it'll notify you, and it'll come right out. I promise you I'll only text you 25 times a day. No. <laughs> That's not going to happen. We're very, very selective about what's texted out there. But so basically, this would also enable you to give online right where you are. Where if you're at home, you're on vacation, you can't get back in, you can't write a check. I don't. I, I write checks, but I only write one. Well, two checks now. I write one to here, and I write one to my for my rent. Everything else is paid online. So uh, basically, we just want to see if there's an interest. That's it. Would you be interested? Would you use this? Would this be something that you'd be interested in? And by the way. There'll be a little clicker down there so you can give to all that you want. One of the things I liked about Tithely, and one of the things that concerns people about giving online is when we take money online, we have to pay a fee, uh, like whatever percentage it is. Well, Tithely is very unique in that they let, they'll let you pay the fee too. So the church, everything that you give to the church is 100% goes to the church. So it's usually like a dollar or two dollars, but you could cover that along with it and say, hey, look, I want to cover that so the church gets it all. Very unique to Tithely. A lot of, we've looked at a lot of other ones. So if this is something you'd be interested in doing, you'd think about that. Roy, and, or sorry, Alan and Roy and the rest of us at the trustee board wanted to just get a pulse of the church to see if this is something you'd even be interested in. So if you have this, could you just, it just says tidally yes or no. Would you do it? It's not a vote to say we're going to do it. It's just a vote. It's just a, a, are you interested? Would you do it? So with that, I'm going to call the guys up for the offering. Pray over the offering. Does anybody need one? Does anybody want one? Okay, hold your hand up. Miss Kelly will come to you. If you didn't get one, and if you have to, if you don't have one, don't get one. Just write yes or no on a little white piece of paper and drop it in the offering plate as it comes by as well. Uh, again, I want to make sure that this isn't something that, uh, it's, not a, it's not a vote, it's just, are you interested? Would you do it? Would it be something that you think is neat? You can, you can stream online our messages right live as soon as we get that going, but you'll be able to just get right into it. You can go to sermon notes, you can do all of those things. It's pretty neat and pretty nifty. So as we come up, and also, there'll be a little thing on there you can click on, you can give to all the different ministries and the furnace and air conditioner. <laughs> so that could be right there too. So uh, would you bow your heads with me in prayer? You know, God, I feel like today has just been a day that my head has been spinning. And I, I can't help but think there's a lot of other people that hit the road, hit the, hit the ground running as soon as they got out of bed this morning. 
And so, Lord, I'm asking that you would just calm me down. A lot of people have seen it in me today, and you've sent them my way to pray for me. But God, I'm praying for all of those in this room that are just like me today, that may be distracted, may have a lot on their mind. May you empty us of all of those things today so we can focus on you. Would your spirit guide us this morning, please? And so, Lord, I also pray for the offering that we're about to receive. Lord, would you, would you press upon the givers? Lord, would you just, would they give happily? And so, Lord, I also pray, as we did already, for all those things that we have need of, and we've already talked about them, but the HVAC and, and many other things that are going around. The church just, it can't function without those people who give. But I specifically think about Ophelia Franks right now, and she could just use your, our prayers, God, so would you heal her, God? Just She's, she's, she's doing okay, but she, she needs help. She'd love to be here today, God, if she could be. And so, Lord, I love her so much, and as much as I love Ophelia, you love her a million times more. So would you heal her? And Lord, would you, again, would you take this offering, Father, willingly from us, we would give it willingly to you, I mean, and Lord, I pray for the rest of this service. It's been great so far. Your words through music have been wonderful. May we follow you in the message today, too, or find you in the message. In Jesus' precious and holy and healing name, I pray, and we all say, so don't forget about this as the offering plate comes through. A lot to talk about. We have a, my message is going to be to the point today. I apologize for the extra, but you know, I don't apologize for the baptism. And, and part of having a youth pastor, associate pastor who does music, worship, and baptizes, you got to think on your feet. You got to have time for him to get up there and do the, do the baptism and sing for us. I should have just made you come down wet. That would have been awesome. With, with electricity up here. That would have been great. Uh, I want to, before I move on too far, I want to make sure I mention, if you have your, yeah, bulletin, don't forget that uh, we are going to have a special business meeting, right? It's called special business meeting on the 24th. You moved on me, Alan. You were, uh, so if you can be a part of that, if you can stick around, that'd be great. We'd love to have you. And, and, and as a, a reward for coming to the business meeting, you can come back at 5 o'clock and watch I Can Only Imagine here at church. We got the rights to the movie. We already bought it, so it's coming here. Yeah? So the 24th. Next two weeks. That's two weeks, right? We have to give two-week notice for the, the business meeting. In all seriousness, we're already planning on the movie. We may do it in here. The only reason we're talking about Upper Room is because uh, we want to have popcorn and drinks and all that stuff like a regular movie theater, and we'd love people to see the Upper Room. The, the drawback to the Upper Room is it's large, but it's up there, and if we get 100 people, it's pretty crowded, right, would you say? So I, I have a feeling that we might not fit. We'll probably do it in here. Maybe. We'll be flexible. Just know that we're going to show the movie and tell your friends and family. You don't, have, who's seen I Can Only Imagine? You don't want to miss it. If you haven't seen it, you have an opportunity to see it, you need to see it. And when I say that, I don't say that about, I know I say that a lot about different things in movies, but this one, ask Kelly. Maybe it's because my relationship with my dad, I was bawling during this movie. If you weren't balling, man, you need to get a heart check or see if your tear ducts are working. Something's going wrong. Of course, I, I, I cry at This Is Us, too. So anyway, uh, oh, I shouldn't have said that, huh? Anyway, there are other announcements on there. You can see them. Deacon's meeting is coming up, CE board this week. You guys know about that if you're part of that. Sunday fun day. Uh, VBS shipwrecked. Where's Jessica? I saw her somewhere. Hi, Jessica, back there in the corner. She's got our, she's got our, our decorations. We are now in VBS mode. If you can spend any time decorating, this place is going to transform the next few weeks into a shipwreck. Yeah, they're going to be, they're, Gilligan's going to appear, y'all. No, he's not. He might be. You never know. So that comes the 25th and 29th. You can register online uh, through our website, and, or you can just come in the office and fill it out, and then our, we can get you hooked up through that. We need volunteers, not just volunteers to help decorate and tear down. Please don't forget about the tear down part. We get people to decorate, but then when it comes down to it's me, Jared, and, and Kelly and Jessica that we do here, you know, and we're all by ourselves with every, the whole building. So that would be tear down on the following weekend after it. Um, but we could use your help. So if you can help out, Kelly's still going to be in charge of training, I believe. We're, as a CE board, we're actually taking it on as a whole to make it run because Kelly actually, last year was really kind of her last day, year as the complete, whatever that is, VBS director. But we're all doing it together now. But uh, so if you can be a part of that, help decorate the church the week before. Actually, 
like I said, see Jessica, because I think we're going to be doing stuff not just the week before, right? No? Sweet. We need your help. Okay. Let me reprogram here for a second. All right. So today is one of those messages that I don't think 10 minutes is going to do its service. I don't think it's going to be enough, so I'm going to introduce it. And then I'm probably going to re-preach it. Because it's not one that... I'm going to tell you right now, Satan does not want me to preach this message today. He doesn't. He said, yes, that's what you said and many others, and I love it. Here's the deal. It's been a heck of a morning. It's been a heck of a week. You ever had those? I talk about them all the time. I'm just a person, you guys. I'm just like you, except I have to stand up here and look back at you scary people when you look at me. Me and Courtney got in a fight on the way up here, to the, which doesn't ever happen on Sunday mornings. Rarely does it happen. She and I are a lot alike, so we butt heads anyway. And then I walk in the church, and then something else happened. I'm, I'm just being real, and some, just things, and then Nori, so, Nor, I can't say it, Nori. I'm just going to do it the way I can say it, if that's all right. And she prayed with me and saw it in, my, in, my, in me, and, and Lori did. You guys, the, some of you know me. I don't hide my feelings very well. I don't hide my emotions at all. I'm a pretty much, and, and when someone says something to me, it hurts, and I'm probably going to cry in front of you. You're going to see it in my face when it hurts. I can't hide it. I, I can't. But kick him out and preach. Kick him out and preach. All right. So here's where we are. So great is salvation. <clears throat> so many of us think of salvation as an experience of the moment you accept Jesus, right? The minute you come to Jesus, or maybe you've never even heard, it's a churchy term almost too, salvation, right? Do you hear it any other ways other than I'm being saved from a boat that's, that's going down? Thank goodness we weren't on the Titanic, right? But people need to say it, salvation. They need to be pulled out of the water, right? People need to be pulled out of the water as well. And many times when we think about salvation, we're only, it's one of those words that's often misused and regulated to nothing and certainly misunderstood. So what is it that we're just so quickly tossing aside? What is that? You know, what is it that we're warned not to neglect in Hebrews 2, which is what we're going to look at today? We're warned not to neglect so, such, such a great salvation. Why did God leave us here? Why the church? What is our salvation? Do we seriously ever even really consider it or truly think and ponder it? And is it just the moment we accept Christ? Is it just that? The truth is, is that we tend to stray from the path and forget the, and forget the goal and the reason why we're here. Are we here merely to just exist and, su and survive? I say, hell no, no way. You see, Acts chapter 20 and 24 solves the quandary. It says, but my life is worth noting nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Amen. New Living Tan Translation is where that came from. The NIV and all the rest say just about the same thing. So our whole being and mentality should be like Paul's, which was to serve God completely and totally. By his job was to advance the kingdom. You see, he got wrapped up in some other things and it didn't suit him very well. Jesus specifically called him and us to tell others about Jesus and to advance the kingdom. And inside of that goes along, I'm looking right at Lori, inside of that goes right along with this discipleship. But it has to start somewhere. And if we neglect our salvation in the middle of it, in other words, if all we do is get saved and nothing else happens, we come to Jesus and no one hears about it, no one sees it, no one knows anything about it, you're neglecting that salvation. We'll talk some more about that in just a second. If we neglect so great a salvation, we neglect our very reason and purpose to exist. It was first announced through the prophets in various times and places, but in these last days, it is spoken to us by His Son. That's in Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. When we neglect this, we neglect our very purpose for existence. Christ's way is superior in every way. All of the Hebrews that Jesus all of the Hebrews that Jesus is superior, says that Jesus is superior and that even the angels have been sent to serve those who accept Christ. The very job of angels is to serve those who are Christians, to come underneath of them and lift them up and guide them. You've heard of the term guardian angel? You better believe there's guardian angels. You better believe there's an angel assigned to you that's going to take care of you. I don't know if it's that one or many, because believe me, I'm sure I need like 20 million of them because I mess up every day. I'm telling you, I had a guardian angel the day I wrecked the, car, the van. I don't even know how I made it through that. The other people don't know how they made it through it. 
I have a limp today. Boy, and my ankle hurts every day. God reminds me of it. But he saved me in that way. Guardian angels are there to look after us, but it's so much more than that. Have you ever, ever stopped and said, why am I in this place? I do it all the time. Because unfortunately, I question my own self many times. And I have to go, you know what? My worth is not found in who I am. My worth is found in him. And when I remember that, and when I focus on that, I realize that I have purpose and that I have strength that's not my own, that's his. So when I have to deal with something like giving a message about money, I pray a lot. When I have to deal with somebody and I have to deal with an issue, I pray a lot. I'm not a confrontational person. It makes me violently sick sometimes. I hate confrontation. I hate it. But we're called to confront, confront sin daily, aren't we? In our own lives. Not everybody else's so much. Sometimes it takes that way. So there it is. Salvation is not earned or deserved. It's only through Christ and his sacrifice. If you look back on it all, we don't deserve it. But God loves us so much that he says, yes, I want you to have it. And I want you to be with me. So it's so important. We have to stay on track because it's that important. And in fact, it's the reason why we exist. The moment we drift from our message is the moment we drift away. I was going to walk away from this, but I better not. So listen. Can we read Hebrews 1, chapter 2, 1 to 4 so you can get context? And I'll explain it just before this because one thing I need you to understand and I want you to always do is go in context of the Bible. Did you know you could take any verse out of context you want and make it fit what you like? People do it every day. Every day. We're not supposed to do that. So in context, Jesus is superior. We find that out before this. He was involved in all of creation. It didn't happen without him. That ha they talk about that in John. They also, he also says it here. But chapter 2 starts out with a warning. It actually sets up the rest of the, the rest of the book. But the warning is, we must pay more careful attention, chapter 2, Hebrews 2, 1 to 4. We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we've heard. Some say we must pay attention, therefore, so that we do not drift away. For, it's, for if the message spoken by angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its full punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified, it, testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Heads up, we're going to be talking about our gifts and how we can figure out what they are and how we can serve God completely through our gift because if you don't know what your gift is, you can't serve him effectively. So listen, number point number one. Listen, why, to whom, to what? Consider Jesus. Fix our eyes on him. His message, because he is above all, therefore his message spoken, salvation through him is priority. When it said the angels told us in, the very, in, in chapter, in verse 1, talk about the angels and how, or before that, sorry, are not only angels ministering spirits, and then it talked about how for if the message spoken in verse 2 by angels was binding and every violation and disobedience received as just, pu just punishment, it's talking about the, the law that came down that showed us what we were doing and how we were doing it and what was wrong. And you got just punishment for that. But you had a way. God had set up the sacrificial system so that you could take a sacrifice to the temple and make it right. That was, that was heading up, pointing to Jesus. In other words, every single sin, every single thing we had to do back then, the Jewish people, the Israelites, had to take an animal or a sacrifice to the temple, to the high priest, to be sacrificed so they could be righteous with God, right with God. But it had to happen continually, over and over and over. And all it was was a part of the law, because they would break the law. The most part, famous part of the law that everybody knows is the Ten what? The Ten Commandments. You know, all of those that talk about it. If you've ever read the Ten Commandments, you know that we absolutely cannot do it. The first one says, I'll, I think it's, you shall have no other gods before me. Right? We put something before God every single day. Whether it be our families, money, things, something many times gets before God. And if you've done that, guess what? You'll need to break that one time in your lawbreaker in God's eyes. 
The Bible also says thou shalt not steal. Have you ever taken a pen that didn't belong to you? You ever found something on the ground? Oh, look at that, I found it. Finders keepers. Didn't belong to you, did it? It's technically stealing. We justify it by going, well, nobody, it's just there. They don't know it's gone. So technically speaking, we're, we're adulterers, we're liars, and we've broken God's law. So God has set up a sacrificial system to fix that, to take care of that. But consider Jesus. Who's ever heard of Jesus? Anybody ever heard of Jesus? Satan's heard of him too. And Satan knows who he is. And Satan is going overboard to take us out. If he could have, he would have stopped me from coming in this morning, but God didn't want that. So he did all that he could to shut my mouth and make me upset and make me mad because he knows how I work and how I roll. Is anybody else like that? One thing sets you off in the morning, you're like, I'm done for the day. Like Garfield, I want to go back to bed, eat my lasagna. Consider Jesus. Fix our eyes on him. His message, because, his message, because he is above all, therefore his message spoken is better than all. It's salvation through him, and that's the priority. His message of salvation, the cross, the message of the cross. Jesus came, died, and rose from the dead three days later, according to the scriptures, not according to Pastor Bruce. His message. We get messed up on all the minor things, though, and we tend to forget the purpose of why we're in church. We get messed up on all the small things. We get all worked up. Not that the air conditioning and heating is a, work, is a small thing, but we get messed up and worked up about that when we forget all about those coming through these doors on Sunday morning and those we come in contact daily. How many times have you got out there? You're going to have to follow me. Just tell David sorry. How many times have you got out there and got upset and you, somebody just, you know they needed Jesus, but then you got mad and it just got distracted. You got distracted and you didn't share anything. And the only thing you shared was anger and hatred. Anybody else like that? Anybody else that get up in the morning and all of a sudden your whole day just kind of goes south? You see, our message of salvation, salvation isn't just the day that, the moment we accept Jesus. That is the beginning of it, right? Our lives display his salvation to other people and how we live it. Every day. Every day. Naomi's in Texas. She's an extension of us in Texas. You've got to save those Texans. They're crazy. <laughs> Strike that out of the, all right? I got a lot of Texas friends, so that's for you, Chad, if you're watching. <laughs> but look at our message is one that's above and beyond all of that salvation is not just the moment we accept Jesus salvation is worked out through our entire life have you ever heard, have you ever heard the term work out our salvation in trembling and fear the moment you're saved it's from that point on it's not a future thing it's right then why would God leave us on this planet if it wasn't so can you explain to me any other purpose for us on this planet to stay around, Lori? And thereby raising them up to save other people too, right? We are called for, well, dual purpose maybe. Love God, love others. And everything that we do has to be that. We're not perfect at it. I'm definitely not perfect at it. And if I ain't perfect at it, I don't think you are either. Except for maybe Kelly. No, she's not either. She's not. But we all need to keep working at it. And when we neglect it is when we drift away. There's a lot in this, in this passage that I could have gone any, a lot of different ways. <clears throat> Excuse me. The word was here in the beginning. Hebrews chapter 1 describes how Jesus was here always. He never didn't exist. I, I think if you read chapter 1, John chapter 1, it's very clear but if you ever read Hebrews chapter 1, which I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says, In the past God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at, very, at many times and in various ways. But in these last days he has spoken to us through, by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. So Jesus has always existed. He was here when, we created, when this world was created. He's existed from all time crazy to think about it like that. The sun and the radiant is the radiance of God's glory and the exact, check this out. Oh, this is so good. Why don't we just read the word? I don't need to preach. It preaches itself. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact, you hear those words? Exact 
representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. This is God speaking of Jesus. So which Jesus are you worshiping? Which salvation are you living out? Is your Jesus a little weakling? Uh-uh. My Jesus conquered all. My Jesus conquered death. My Jesus conquered hell. What about yours? You see, our salvation, the way we live it out, displays how we believe about Jesus. How we live our lives daily shows how we believe in God, how much we believe that God will do what he says he's going to do. Do you believe God is the ultimate and all-creator and, and all-powerful? Not the all-powerful Oz, because that was, guy was a fake, right? The all-powerful. Do you believe that? If you believe that, say amen. amen. And raise your hand, all those things. We are going to go back south. Y'all start preaching, okay? I mean, y'all start going, amen, praise Jesus. If you stand up and roll in the aisles, that's a bit much. <laughs> Just say hallelujah or something like that, okay? All right, the word was here in the beginning, and, de and it, it declares and celebrates Jesus as the final word to the world. Capital W. Therefore, his message is of the utmost importance, which is the salvation message. And Hebrews 12, 25 says, I already said this, I'll say it again. Please go write this down and put it somewhere. Hebrews 12, 25. See to it that we do not refuse him who has warned us. We are receiving a kingdom. This one I haven't read yet. We are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Be thankful and reverence in all. Our God is consuming fire. Our God is consuming fire. That's actually the next part of it. We have, to be, we have to be sharing our faith. We have to be out there sharing and doing. Our salvation begins. Many people have taken this passage and said, see, you can lose your salvation. That is not what this is saying. This is saying if we neglect our salvation by not telling others about what we have, they're going to be condemned forever because we're not doing our job as what we've been left here for to do to tell others about Jesus. So if we neglect that salvation... What's the ultimate thing that's going to happen? If you don't accept Christ, what happens to you? Ultimately, you are condemned forever. Amen? In a place called hell, which I hate that place. And it's not a cuss word, by the way. It's a real destination for some people. And at that very fact, you guys, that very fact, y'all, should cause you alone to get out of bed and want to share Jesus with every soul you come in contact with. And I'm dead serious about that. So pay attention. Next one. Pay attention or be in danger of drifting into destruction. Now, there's two types of destruction we could be talking about, and this is the way I went. You have destruction of your salvation, of your soul, if you don't know Jesus. However, I was, anybody ever been in a boat and the motor, you don't put the anchor down and you just kind of drift? Before long, you don't even realize how far you've drifted, right? You're just kind of, some people fish that way. They drift and they fish. Pastor Mike has done that with me. Do that. How about in an ocean when you go swimming? You know, Pismo, even though Pismo's probably the warmest, closest to us, I guess. You get out there in the water, and you're swimming, and you're swimming, and you don't pay attention. All of a sudden, you look up. You can't even find where you had your stuff because you've, you've drifted so far, right? My point is that when we drift, drift happens before we even realize it's happening. You see, when we walk and we, we kind of stop paying attention, because we do sometimes, We'll start drifting. And that drifting can lead to destruction in our life. Why is it dangerous to drift? Why is it dangerous to drift? Because if we stop sharing Christ, the result is destruction. No escape from those around us if we don't share our faith with them. That's the number one thing. If we, if we drift, we stop sharing salvation. We neglect our salvation. The, and like I said, the idea here is not that we lose our salvation. It's that we stop doing what we're supposed to be doing. If we, neglect, we neglect our salvation by not, we neglect our salvation by not fulfilling our purpose, then, and if we do that, others will suffer the judgment of God. It is dangerous to drift, drift it, cause, it creates a burden that is supposed to be light. The moment we drift away from Jesus, the moment we kind of like, Lori, I'm going to use you because you're, you're easy and you don't get mad at me. Have you ever found yourself drifting from God and then wondering why? You have, right? Has anybody else found themselves drifting from God and saying, what's happening here? It happens, like I said, it happens slowly. For some people, they just stop going to church. I don't need to go to church. I'd rather whatever. Uh, I don't know if you believe this or not, but it's easier to stop going to church once you, if you, you skip one, then you skip the next. Before you know it, it just gets easier and easier not to go back to church. 
So many people have started like that. And you start drifting. You see, when we drift, it creates a burden that's not supposed to be there. Jesus says, my burden is light. When we add that burden back onto us, it's so heavy that we can't live. And then we start, not, then we start feeling so weighed down that we stop sharing our faith and people can't see Jesus through us and in us. I'm getting to a point, I promise. It happens slowly. Before long, you look out and realize you've drifted farther than you thought. And it's always us. God doesn't drift from us. If we distance ourselves, it's us distancing ourselves from God, not the other way around. But don't forget something. God will pursue you with an everlasting love. Thank God. But when we find ourselves out there, we wonder how we got there, and it didn't just happen yesterday. We can kind of see where it started. Sometimes. Sometimes we've been drifting for so long, we don't even know where it started. The point is this. Say, God, I don't want to do this anymore. And you know what? He'll just pick you up and put you right back where you started. You see, sometimes we can't even get ourselves back in. I've only seen it like once, maybe twice, where a person got out beyond. You know, they drifted or the rip tread or something took them out too far. And, and a lifeguard had to go out and grab them. You know, with a, what's that thing called? Thank you. Jet ski. What's a jet ski? We don't have water in Kalinga. Anyway, um, a jet ski, and they go out and save the person and bring them back in. See, God can bring us right back in, but we just have to yield to him and say, I'm sorry, I, need to, I want to go back. And remember, if you remember a couple weeks ago, God will instantaneously, he is waiting. He won't just walk, he'll sprint to you. So, let's get back to this. Number three. So great a salvation. Wait a minute, I went too far, I think. Turn back to his word, Acts 20:25. 20, Can you please turn your Bibles to Acts 20:25? 20, That's the one I really like a lot. I stole this from a good friend of mine. Well, I didn't steal it from anybody. God put it in the Bible when he was talking about it, and I liked it. As I was preparing this message, God put this in my mind. He put it right there. Acts chapter 20. You got in the, in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. It's the first Bible after the, after the first four books of the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. It's called the Acts of the Apostles. So Acts chapter 20, and by the way, I don't have a lot of time to give you a, a Bible scholaring thing, but a guy named Luke wrote this, the same Luke who wrote the book of Luke. And he's, when he's there, and sometimes he's there, it says we, it includes himself, sometimes he's not. In this case, he was there in verse 20, 20, 25, Acts 20, 25. Find my place. I think I wrote the wrong one down, Kelly. Now, I know that none of you among you whom I've gone out about preaching the gospel will ever see me again. Oh, it's the one right before this. <laughs> 24, not 25. Verse 24, 20, 24. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me if, I, if, I only, if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given to me, the task of testifying to the gospel of grace. In other words, if all I've ever done is get saved, accept Jesus, and do nothing else, he considers that worthless. If I never complete the task that God has given to me, which is sharing my faith, advancing the kingdom of God, it's worthless. Salvation starts with Jesus and continues all the way through to eternity. Our, our job, our reason, is to do that. We need to go against the flow of the world because the world says to do something opposite. Can you turn to Romans chapter 12? Next book over. If you're already in Acts, you just got to flip over to Romans chapter 12. I want to be... Oh, I just want to jump and start screaming. The gospel is why I exist. It's why we exist. And it's one of the things that if we're not doing it, if we're not sharing it, and, and, and sometimes using words, you see, because our life displays Jesus and how we treat others, right, Mary? How we treat others displays Jesus just as much as the words that we use. And I love it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal your, your line. Show me. Miss Kelly, Mama. To us, my beautiful bride tells anybody that says, hey, I love you, she says, okay, show me. Because sometimes we say, I love you, but there's no evidence. Think back in your life for a minute. Is there evidence? 
Is there evidence today? All right, so let me, let me check this out. Chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, and I'm just going to read them very quickly. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in the views and the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as, a living, sacrif- as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will, good, some says, what God's good will is. Oh, there it is. His good will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Youth. Youth. <laughs> I was trying to be funny. It didn't work out very well. Young people and everybody, old people, middle people, whoever you are, whatever that is, this applies to everybody. Go against the flow. Our life as a Christian is sacrificial living. We're called to be, to be living sacrifices. It's not popular, and it's a huge commitment. The moment you accept Jesus is probably the, it's not probably, it is the biggest commitment you'll ever make in your life. Next to the commitment to your wife. Go against the flow of the world. It's not popular. How many of you guys believe that? It's not popular to go with Jesus' way. It, try it. Try it. It takes commitment. To follow Christ means to think of others before ourselves. Christ's example from the cross is this. I want you to think about Jesus when he died on the cross. You know what it took to get up there, right? People said, put him on the cross. We don't want him. He's on the cross. Okay? I'm really shortening it up because a lot of bad things happened on his way to the cross. He was beaten. He was punched. And a lot of other things happened. On the cross is this. Check this out. On the cross, his example was to others, Father, forgive them for they... As believers, as Christians, our job is to think like that for other people. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now you're thinking, well, that's Jesus. That's not me. That's not a person. Stephen, in Acts chapter 7, is preaching the gospel to Sadducees and Pharisees, to religious men, and telling them, that they, co- they continually, continually, continually quit following God. God said, do this. They did it for a little while, then they walked away. God said this. They did it for a little while, and they walked away. God said this. God kept putting men in charge and leading them to him, and they denied it every single time. And then he ends it, and he goes like this. He says, and the Son of Man, this Jesus, whom you killed, died for you. And God opened the heaven and he allowed Stephen to see Jesus at the right hand of the Father. And he says, I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of the Father. And with that, they were like little children. And they went, ah! I'm not kidding. Read the Bible. They covered their ears. They screamed and they charged at him. And they killed him. They stoned him. They grabbed him in anger. The Bible says in anger. They grabbed him and they stoned him. And do you know what his words were? Father, don't hold this sin against them. That was a man just like you and I. Father, don't hold this sin against them. You guys, our job, Chapel Grace, my only heart, you may question a lot of whatever. My, my heart is this. My heart is to reach the lost and to grow them in Christ so they can reach the lost. That's my heart for Chapel Grace. For goodness sakes, grace is in our name. We are Chapel Grace. Grace is thinking about others before yourself. Grace is sacrificial living. Grace, follower of Jesus, means we'll do whatever it takes and die to self, which is way harder than to die physically for that other person. You may not, whatever, but here's the deal. We're called to reach others for Christ. And each and every one of you have your own unique way about doing it. Cleet does it with the basketball team, not just the basketball team. And he doesn't say anything. He lives his life before them. Sorry, Cleet, you're just right there. My... But he lives his life before them. Mike, his brother, have seen the same thing. We've got a lot of godly coaches who just, just live a life before people. If you were there to hear Coach Reen's message at uh, Baccalaureate, living your life before him. You know what? 
we're a failure, but with Christ we're not. We do it on our own. That's what his message was basically. It's awesome. We need Christ. You need Christ. They need Christ. Let's pray. Lord, I just praise and thank you for this morning, and I don't even know if it's exactly how you wanted it to come out. I don't exactly know what you wanted, but I do know that you communicated to other people through your spirit in their heart. Because it's never words that convince men or women of anything. It's your Holy Spirit who talks to people. So, Father, I pray this morning for all of us. I pray for myself that I would continue to follow you and not drift. Lord, I pray that I would look to your word every day. I would follow your will every day, and I would know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. That your son is the way. And not just the way to eternal life, but the way to live life on this planet today. May we have victory, God. May we live our life so that others can see it. And may others come to Jesus because of that. Lord, give us the words to say when necessary. Share with us and show with us what we need to do. Lord, may we know how to eloquently maybe, or just basically share through your word how to show somebody that Jesus, that you sent your son to die for us and rise from the dead, defeating sin, death, and hell forever. May we be those witnesses every day. And God, may you provide for us the things and the needs that we have as we go along. May your your ministering spirits through the angels guide and lift us and pick us up when we need it. Protect us when those things happen. May fear leave our bodies the moment we go to share our faith. God, may we always seek you with all that we are. May we always do what you ask. And God, may you be first in our lives. May we wake up in the morning and say, okay, Jesus, what's next? God, it's a big step and it's a big job. But thank you, God, that you don't let us do it in our own power and our own strength. You give us the strength daily to live our lives. Thank you, God. For it's Jesus' precious and holy and healing name I pray and we all say. Okay, we only went 25, 20 minutes after. So would you stand with me? Are we going to sing a song, Jared? Do we have any of those? Just play it as we go out. I'll just kind of, they don't have to stick around and sing it with us. Look, you guys, I'm not going to give a long extended invitation because I kept you here a long time, and I don't think I need to because that's not what saves you. But if God's been dealing with your heart today, if God's been doing something, I don't know what it is, whatever it is, if God's been doing nothing, then so be it. But if he's been working in your heart, what I mean by that is you hear that still small voice in your head talking to you throughout the message. Would you, would you give into it today? Would you just pray right there where you are, whatever he's saying to you? You know what he's saying to you. I don't. I don't have any clue what he's saying to you. I have no idea. But whatever it is, as if, you, if you need to go, there's the door. Go ahead. But if you want to do business with God before you leave, which I'd suggest you do, while we sing how, how Great Thou Art, how can you leave on that song? As we sing How Great Thou Art, why don't you really tell God how great He is? Through voice, maybe just pray as we all sing How Great Thou Art.
But I can't help but just say, if this song doesn't draw you to the person of God, if you don't stop thinking about who God is during the song, it sings exactly who he is and how he is. How great is your God? As you sing it, maybe think about how great God is to you. Is he small or is he large? Can you contain him in just your mind or how wide, how big and wide and large is he, right? As you sing, why don't you just sing to God? Don't, don't pay attention to anybody else. Don't worry what anybody else is doing around you. If you want to turn the lights down a little bit, that's fine. You won't trip going out. We'll still see. But please, worship is about you and God, not what anybody else is doing. So if you want to raise your hands, raise your hands. If you want to sit down, sit down. If you want to come up here and kneel and sing, do that. But your part of worship is on you and God. Don't worry about what anybody else is thinking. That's their problem. If they don't like what you're doing, that's their problem. Let them solve it. Let God take care of that. You worry about you and God. How's that sound, right? Let's do that. Go ahead and sing the rest. And when I that God his son not sparing sent him to die I scarce can take it that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he fled and died to take up we come to you in prayer just humbled by how big you are how large and in charge you really are and how great you are and so Lord as we go through our day the rest of this day this week our lives father may we always remember this song and may it be in our hearts and may we praise you because how big you really are and in those moments when we forget how big you are and we put you in a little spot, may we be reminded that you created everything from nothing. So you are big. You are great. You are God. When they asked, who is this? Who is this? Who are you? You said, I am. Because you've always been. Thank you, God, as we finish this morning and as we pray, as we leave this, this place, singing the song, How Great Thou Art. May you bless our socks off. In Jesus' precious and holy and healing name, I pray, and the church says, have a great day. I think we're going to finish singing. If you guys want to take off, finish singing if you want.